What's up boys and welcome back to another episode of my Ultimate Team 14 favorites. On the docket today is my favorite midfielders that are defensive minded, so CDMs and center mids that do more defensive work in my squads. Thank you so much for the support on these videos guys. I'm surprised that with Ultimate Team so dead and kind of that little lull between the death of Ultimate Team 14 and the long wait for Ultimate Team 15, you guys are still supporting my videos, so thank you. And without further ado, let's move on. So the first beast in my video is no surprise at all, Patrick Vieira's legend card. I mean the height and the work rates and those stats just all put together means he's an absolutely incredible defensive center mid or CDM. Now as you can see on the screen his ultimate team 15 stats are actually kind of exciting. Some stats have gone down and some have kind of gone up or maybe they're just stats I don't really understand. Now his physical is apparently very high which I guess is his strength and other things but the card looks like it's going to be pretty damn incredible. The next legend is a card that you actually have to convert down from a center attacking mid but it's really worth it guys. Again very similar to Patrick Vieira. Stefan Effenberg's medium high work rate, six foot two frame, and just overall well rounded stats make him an absolutely fantastic CDM. And as you can see on the screen, of course, his Ultimate Team 15 stats kind of show that they've tried to make him an even more rounded, but maybe a more attacking midfielder now. Nevertheless, for relatively cheap compared to other legends, he's very, very good. I think he might have gone up from the 600k that I paid, but get him if you're building a German team or trying to hybrid in some legends into another team that you already have. Next on the docket, is our first blue card and you're gonna look and be like oh wait where is the other card that you're probably thinking I would include but just be patient the Ivory Coast tank will show up anyways Daniele De Rossi is the first of the blues now this specific ultimate team 14 card is amazing guys he should be a staple in anybody's Serie A team or Italian team or hybrid if they can fit him in again very well rounded maybe suffers from a little bit of a lack of pace but otherwise great and something that I like to see is they made his ultimate team 15 card great as well now I think he he may get ignored because he does have low pace but someone that's going to be worth looking at at the start of ultimate team 15 i feel like he's going to be pretty cheap up next is the french god paul pogba i absolutely love this card he's very special to me as well because he's pack pulled i've used him for 100 plus games and i kind of move him between center mid and cdm now i've had him even at center attacking mid before some people say hey use him at center forward he's great there too but i like him in a holding midfield role especially in a 4-2-3-1 setup where he has a dual or a partner cdm to work with daniela de Rossi Paul Pogba working together in the midfield is incredible and I'm happy to see for ultimate team 15 as you can see as well that his stats keep improving as they should again he looks like he'd be a great left center mid or right center mid in a 4-3-3 but also a dual center defensive mid as well that 73 defending may be a bit of a worry but then you've got the 88 physical that strength though now up next is a guy that everyone would have been expecting right off the bat in terms of the first blues the beast that is Yaya Toure now I know you're gonna look at that and be like but Nick you have the team of the year a team of the season in your club too yes but in terms of my favorite cards in the game this is the one for so many reasons guys he's pack pulled that's huge this is the first card that really shot my youtube channel into kind of the knowledge of everyone else and kind of didn't go viral but kind of did mad hd gamer put my reaction in his videos and it really helped boost my youtube channel i've played almost 250 games with this card he features as a substitute in most of my teams so i just love this guy now the one travesty for me is when you look at his ultimate team 15 cards stats and his overall rating do you think that's fair because i don't he's probably one of the best midfielders in the world right now and i think ea constantly underrates him especially when you look at the center mids that are higher rated than him in the game anyways that's another debate for later on this card will be good next year and i will be getting them up next is a card that honestly I never would have thought would have gotten anywhere near my favorite players of Ultimate Team in any shape or form. But after building a full Chelsea team, the Serbian beast Nemanja Matic has now been a staple in almost all my BPL teams as well. Really what I love about this card is his left foot on top of his medium high and six foot four frame, but he works really well as a left center defensive mid in a dual center defensive mid formation. Him and Yaya together are just beastly. And as you can see the Ultimate Team 15 stats, nice to see that he's gotten the boost that he deserved he's had a great season for Chelsea great start to the season as well so I didn't think I would use this card next year until he got a few informs but I might have to pick him up looking at those stats now this next card is gonna make me look like a bit of a hypocrite to be honest because his regular card is one of my most annoying and worst cards I've ever had to use an ultimate team but his man of the match version is just an entirely new player I don't know why that is maybe someone can explain it to me but he hasn't had that many boosts in stats compared to his regular card but I love this green 
Joaquin Kadira. And he's actually replaced one of my other favorite center defensive mids in my main wager team that you'll see very soon. Again, I think his ultimate team 15 stats are fair. EA's done a good job in those. They're actually pretty similar to his man of the match card, so I can't complain about that. Helping me segue perfectly into the next player is Xavi Alonso. Now, this is the card that got replaced in my wager team by Sammy Kadir's man of the match card. Honestly, I loved using this card. I have about 100 games played with him. He was fantastic. Lacks quite a bit in the pace, so, you know, that's expected with 55. But always did great for me and has incredible set pieces. I just wish he got one or two win forms throughout the year. And subsequently, his ultimate team 15 card has taken a little bit of a drop, I think, because of his form and kind of the injury woes he's had through the last year. But he looks like a half-decent card, and I wish he was still at Madrid. I don't know why they let him go. He might have actually requested to leave, so then I guess there's nothing they could have done. But I think that's a great addition for Bayern. Now, similarly to Matic, Perez actually was a very big surprise for me. I actually picked him up because I was doing an Argentina squad builder and then never sold him because I was so impressed. I was worried about his height and his overall lack of defending and heading, especially in a defensive mid role that I used him in, but partnered with the team of the tournament, Mascherano, or a few other gems that are in the Portuguese league, and he absolutely shines. I really, really like this card. He's got great dribbling and that pace really helps at the back, let's be honest. And for 35,000 coins, boys, absolute bargain. Now, I don't really know how great he did throughout the year. Yes, he had a good season, clearly, but I don't know enough about him to kind of dictate what I think his stats will be in Ultimate Team 15, because there's been no leaks of a Perez card on Ultimate Team 15 yet. Up next is another special card for me, my pack pulled Inform Luis Gustavo. This guy is kind of the rock in my Brazilian team, and I love him, and as you can see, his Ultimate Team 15 card stats are great as well. Someone that no doubt will feature in my Brazilian team next year. The height, the work rates, everything about his stats indicate that he's a great player, and it shows on field as well. And to be honest, Brazilian teams in general are lacking for having a holding midfielder, so he is really the only shining light you got, other than one or two non-shiny players that just don't stack up to him. They're okay, but they don't stack up. Up next is the absolutely godly, both in real life and in game for me, Nigel the Ninja de Jong. This player in real life, and I think even in the game, is both loved or hated. I don't think there's a real middle ground for him. Ever since I pack pulled him, though, I've been using him in my Dutch team, very similar to Luis Gustavo. He's an incredible rock at the back, both for club, country, and in this game. And having a peek at his Ultimate Team 15 card, I'm actually really happy. Now, he's got a higher rating, he's non-shiny, and his stats don't really make sense to me in terms of his actual rating. But that pace boost and the defending is something that I'm very happy about, and he's going to go right into my Dutch team next year. Up next is arguably my favorite center defensive mid, center mid in the entire game throughout this entire year. He's been a staple of my Twitch streams, he's been a staple of my celebrations and just freak out sessions for the national team when he features for them. He's just an all-around awesome guy if you follow him on Instagram or Twitter and stuff. He's just a genuine good guy. Leroy Jenkins! No, but seriously, I absolutely love this card. In-game, he feels so broken in a good way. Now, I know his Ultimate Team 15 card is covering the stats. Let me move that for you guys for a quick second. Check those stats out. I pulled him not very long ago from a pack. Out of 131 games, 40 goals, 36 assists. That's more than all of the cards that I've shown you guys so far in terms of production from center mid. He, he's just outrageously good and I hope he's this broken next year because I will use him all year long. And again, having a peek at his stats for Ultimate Team 15, he looks fantastic, just as good as he looked this year. That 86 physical though, mixed with those awesome overall stats, he's going to be great and let's hope he can get himself an inform for QPR. I think a week or two ago he had a great game, he got an assist and had a long shot that cracked the post that I freaked out on because I thought it was going to go in. So just hold up Leroy, Ultimate Team's out in another week or so, so just wait to beast it until then, please. Now finally we've gotten to the silvers of the episode. The first one is the Portuguese tank William Carvalho or Carvalho I think. I don't know how to properly say his name. He is rather expensive for a silver in the Portuguese league for 200k but he performs guys. Just have a look at his stats for a silver card. Mix that again with his height and his medium high work rates and he was a beast for me. Now remember when I said Perez mixed with someone else in the Portuguese league is an incredible dual CDM partnership? It was this guy. I built a Liga Portuguese team with Perez and him at CDM and it was deadly. Now I think generally the Portuguese league players are kind of broken and overpowered anyways but these guys were letting no one through at the back. I'd highly recommend him honestly he was one of my favorite cards to use all year. Now up next is arguably one of my 
favorite silvers to use all year, actually. Mr. Muhammad Diame is a tank, boys, and I'm sure you guys know it by now. This card, again, is particularly special because I pack pulled him and I love using him. Six foot one. I kind of do wish he had medium high work rates again so he stays back more, but. The way he plays in real life, EA's got it right. He kind of does just hover around the midfield and gets up quite a bit as well. Now, I don't know how his season's gone, so I'm not going to do a prediction card for him similar to the other cards because I don't know them. So I'm not just going to make up stats and hope to be right. So the second BPL silver player to feature in this video, I'm wondering, do you know who it is? Is it going to be Tete? Is it going to be someone else? Who is it going to be? It's the little bulldog, Gary Medell. Again, I've used him quite often in the silver BPL team. I pack pulled him rather recently, actually, so he's replaced the card that I purchased. But him with Diame in the midfield is just incredible. I used him in a Chili team and he marshaled the shit out of my midfield. He was actually more noticeable than my team of the season, Arturo Vidal. Who I know a lot of people are going to say, Nick, where is Vidal in this team? Just didn't do it for me, honestly. I don't know why he felt broken. I know everyone's going to disagree with me, but... Let me know what your thoughts of Team of the Season Vidal were in the comments below. And the final player of this episode, boys, and the only bronze in this entire video. And it's going to be a complete shocker. Most of you guys will have no idea where I pulled this out of. Team of the Season, Mauricio Albernaz, I think is his name. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Albernaz. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. I, I know you're going to look at this and be like, what the fuck? Why, why this guy out of all the ones you could have picked? I just liked him. I built a Swedish team and my Swedish national team won me a few gold cups and again it was honestly thanks to this guy i had a dual cdm partnership of him and i think it was elm and he was running up and down the field like a tank like it made no sense i know his stats are rather poor to be honest especially for you know a card that would try to battle high rated gold but he was great now just like the last few cards i have no idea how he actually did i have no idea if he deserves a big upgrade into the middle silvers or high silvers i'm not entirely sure so if you know him if he plays maybe for a local team or a rival team if you're from Sweden. Let me know what you think his card stats will be down below because when I use this guy on stream, there's a whole bunch of people like, oh my God, he plays for a local team. He's a beast. This is awesome that you're using him. And there we go. The third episode is done, boys, for this series. Thank you so much for watching the videos, guys. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, again, as always, smash the like button. And up next is my favorite attacking mids from the entire game. So that means center mids and center attacking mids. There's a shit ton of cards for me to cover in that video. So we'll look forward to that and catch you beauties on the flip side. Peace!